and welcome to nine on the positive side. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks so much for joining us this weekend. For one florist in North Carolina, she spent most of her almost 100 years of living arranging flowers with her husband. Chad Tucker shares her secret to long living and love. Well, I usually use my lower flowers first. Donna Long has been making the world a more beautiful place for nearly a hundred years now. I thank my Lord Jesus that I am here today and feeling like I feel. As a florist, she spent her entire working career running the family shop, sides florist in Winston-Salem. We started out in my mother's basement. It actually is a fun business, but it's a very, very hard life. It was hard work for Donna and her late husband, Bill. I think about him every day. Especially at Valentine's. We were so tired when that was over with that, that we went home and, and slept <laughs> the day. <laughs> they were married for more than 50 years, a love that blossomed between the arrangements and bouquets. He gave me candy. She gave him a card. They don't do flowers. Always got a box of candy. Her sweetness has never faded. Now nearing a century of living, she spends it making memories with family. And yes, still putting flowers together. Living life in full bloom. I tried to get it kind of even, you know. In Winston-Salem. Looking for Roy's folks. Chad Tucker, Fox E News. We have an update to a story we told you about last week. Miss Jones's class from Lake Forest Elementary School in Greenville received a Valentine's Day card from 49 states. One more to go. That was at last check. They were only missing Vermont when we checked in with them earlier this week. It was all for their project Hearts Across the World. Miss Jones got the idea from social media to collect the cards. Her post went viral. I initially just asked for cards, but I've been getting people sending like Valentine's goodie bags for my students. On the one from Italy, they sent um, handmade chocolate from Italy for the students. So they've been getting more than just cards. A lot of people have been sending goodies as well. So they love seeing when it's a big box and just not an envelope. So they're really excited to see what we got. The class also got cards from Poland and Holland, too. In Ohio, some residents at a couple of assisted living facilities were feeling the love on Valentine's Day thanks to a group of students. Over the weekend, they hand-delivered hundreds of handmade Valentines. The cards were made for each resident and personalized using a list of their likes and their interests. The students are part of Brunswick School's Beat Video Program, which teaches students to write, edit, and shoot TV news. But this is their way of giving back to the people in their community who otherwise might not get a Valentine. Real sweet. A Jamestown Eagle Scout in North Carolina is bringing one of the country's most popular pastimes to his community. Let's check it out a little closer. Samuel Williams and Troop 68 work to complete this gigantic checkerboard in the park to, as he put it, enhance the recreational offerings in Jamestown. Williams is a lifelong checkers fan who thought this would be a good way to bring his hobby to other people. I've always enjoyed checkers and I thought that it was a great way to engage our community. I went online and I was able to figure out what the best products would be to help me build this project. And then also um, the like game aspect, I've always enjoyed game design and those kinds of things. So I thought that this was really interesting combination of my interests. And truly is creative. The checkerboard fulfills William's service project requirement. He built it out of 32 black and white pavers. If you've ever baked chocolate chip cookies, you know all the typical ingredients. But a father from Wilson is sharing what he thinks might be the most important part of this recipe. Once upon a time, there was a loving dad named Carl. He had three energetic boys. Carl Graham is reading his book. They love spending time together. Let's bake cookies with dad. Especially when involved baking delicious treats. Teaching children how to bake. Good job. We put them on the sheet. We're making a lot of cookies, okay? Is personal to Carl. I come from a, a one-parent household with just my mother. 
And so a father baking cookies is really, you know, important to my children as well because of, of me not having that. His love for baking grew in high school so and even more room. as an adult. When I was working a nine to five job, it was a little stressful. I kind of got burned out and then I still was baking. I said, you know what? Why not build my own dreams instead of working hard to build someone else's? He wrote his book, Drawing Inspiration, from cooking with his sons. Showing my children how to bake, showing them what to do, showing them the steps, and a big thing, fatherhood is so important to me. Graham wants to help other families make those memories. The family base and the family structure is so important and it's so needed, and those memories will last forever. There's even a recipe in the book. My biggest dream from this is being able to give other families and fathers hopefully that experience so that way they want to do this with the children, they have those bonds. And in his recipe, they needed flour, salt, baking soda, vanilla and shrek. Is the most important ingredients, family and love. To be able to share that feeling, to give that feeling, that father feeling that's so, so needed, it's euphoric that I'm able to give that to my children. And so the story of Carl, Elijah and Jaden and Tristan. Baking cookies together, happily ever after. Graham's book is available on Amazon. He also has another book that he is working on. You can find out more about that and Let's Bake Cookies with Dad over on our website, WNCT.com. A couple from New York is living out their dreams of owning a business. Joan Subgant and Anthony Cunningham own this restaurant in Rocky Mount. They've been open for four months. Subgant is making these Haitian patties. She learned how to make them when she was seven years old. It's a skill she says her grandmother taught her. It's been really good. It's been really good. We've been meeting a lot of people. We've had a lot of return customers. Um, people really love the flavor and the food, and that really makes me happy. Like for me, if you're really dreaming about something, coming here made me realize that, that it is possible. If you can achieve it and you really push for it, that is, it is possible. They're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 in the morning until 5 at night. To see this full story, check out our online originals. That's going to be over on WNCT.com. And WNCT is honoring Black History Next, a walking tour through the history of one North Carolina town. The town of Wake Forest is packed with historical gems hidden in plain sight. During Black History Month, you can get a chance to learn about the formation of the African American community during a series of walking tours. Rod Carter got a sneak peek of what you can expect. Wake Forest was um, founded as mostly an agricultural and um, forest land area. Wake Forest dates back to the 1700s. And it was mostly large farms and plantations in this area. It's rich with history, including here in the Northeast community. We really wanted to promote and celebrate the significant history that is in this neighborhood. Important information about the African American community and how it came to be. It's important to the town of Wake Forest that we celebrate everybody's history. When there was a pool, there was a pool house here. Michelle Michael of the Wake Forest historical preservation. So this is Juniper Street. Mm -hmm. The water tower was also on the site. Gave me an early look at the town's African American history walking tours. Most people are familiar with Wake Forest College and its origin here in the town of Wake Forest, um, but they are not familiar with the behind the scenes or the unseen history that happened. Among the 13 or so sites on that 90 minute tour is Taylor Park. It's new now, but these placards tell you more about what was here, including the first school for blacks in this area. This was the site of the first public school. Okay. Um, 
1926, the, the school closed because a new school was built that would become Du Bois High School. It then became a home and later the African American Volunteer Fire Department and the first location of the first pool for blacks in the area. It all sat right here. So, I mean, just not just homes in this Correct. Place. And then just stroll across the street and you'll find the oldest black Baptist church in Wake Forest, Olive Branch. It was founded just after slavery and although in a different physical structure, it's been on this very corner since emancipation. It is kind of our cornerstone of the Northeast community and it is still an active congregation today. Right next to Olive Branch is the church's cemetery. This is one of the oldest of the black oldest. cemeteries. And just down the street, another history historical place of eternal rest. The town does maintain it um, and we have names here that are still in this community today. Mm -hmm. You know there's Massenburgs, Jones, Taylor, Cooks. And then just a stone's throw away this home, the Ailey Young House. It was once quarters for enslaved people. Later it was purchased by a formerly enslaved woman who turned it into her home for her family. She and her husband raised 12 children here. This is key for me because it's about you know bringing diversity, showing and highlighting underrepresented communities and also treating our history equally. The Ailey Young House is part of another historical endeavor. The Wake Forest Historical Museum, which is partnering with the town for these walks, is hosting something called We Built It. It's a traveling exhibit that looks at the architecture across the state. When it comes here, places like the Young House and other African American homes will be a part. And there's another exhibit you can see as well. Our current exhibit is from the collection's portraits, which features a variety of portraits uh, in our collection, but also from the community as well. Uh, so from taking this tour, you can learn a little bit more about Du Bois School. Uh, we have portraits in the exhibit featured from the Du Bois School. In the meantime, you can get your steps in and your history lessons too by taking a walk through history in Wake Forest. And that was Rod Carter reporting. February, of course, is Black History Month. WNCT has something special for you coming up on February 23rd. You can join us 530 that Friday afternoon for our Honoring Black History Month special. You'll be able to catch impactful stories, including history right here in eastern North Carolina. That special is 30 minutes. Next on 9 on the positive side, we're headed to Williamson for a sweet story. Plus... We're the honorary bridesmaids. We at first wanted to wear strapless dresses <laughs> with hoop skirts. <laughs> and so then uh, we decided against that. Life seems to be a whole lot sweeter with love. Up next, how one couple is giving a new meaning to young love. And this week's positive sign, we're connecting the community. And I'm so glad that we are out in the community in Williamston with Becky Williamston. And this week's positive sign, we're connecting the community. And I'm so glad that we are out in the community in Williamston with Becky Williams with Cakes by Becky. She yes. is the owner. Thank you so much for having us yes. here today. Thank you for coming. So talk to us a little bit about Cakes by Becky. Cakes by Becky was a leap of faith. I always loved to bake and I just, after I retired from work, I was working part time and I just started playing with baking cakes for some friends. I started Googling and I started looking at Pinterest to get ideas and I started playing with decorating cakes and it took off. I always wondered how it would be to work in a bakery. I thought, man, it would be cool if I could have done that. So we took a leap of faith got this building and we said, you know what, we're just going to open up a bakery. It was in the middle of COVID, so it was 2020, and it was in the middle of a hurricane. We had no power, but the people were lined up outside to come in, and we opened, opened the doors for the breeze to come through and sold out of everything we had. I trusted God, and He opened all the right doors, and so that's our, my, my praise goes to Him first. Um, it was a leap of faith. I'm like, you're going to have to 
to show me what to do, Lord. I just cannot believe that I have opened a bakery and it's doing good and it's just cute and it's just, I love it. I, I love this, I love this place. You said you're self-taught. 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 Never taken a class um, on how to decorate or anything. I just, I watched videos on how to do a rosette or how to do whatever, how to do a drip, how to make the drip. And so I can go back and look at some of the first cakes I did to the cakes that I'm doing now. And I'm like, man, I can't believe I did that cake. Um, it's just fun. It's just fun. I, just, I do love it. And the cakes, when people order their cakes and when they come and pick it up, when they squeal and they, I mean, they are so excited. That's why, that's, that right there is why we do what we do. It, there's just no feeling like it when they love their cake. And I'm the only decorator, so you know, we can only do so many. So we try to get the word out for people to call, book your cake early. And the customers, or why we're still here. We have the best customers. The community, number one, our community here in just in Martin, Martin County. Um, they continue to come, they continue to order, they support me, and we sell batches of party squares. Yes, so that, the cheese pennies is another uh, favorite. A lot of times we sell out of our cheese pennies. They have Rice Krispies in them, so there's a little twist on it, and they are good. A lot of brownies and the party squares. What is your favorite ingredient? Powdered sugar. Powdered sugar is the basis of this whole place. It's buttercream. It's all about the buttercream. That is the main ingredient, powdered sugar. The icing is the best part. <laughs> yes. So you're definitely going to satisfy someone's sweet tooth coming yes. in here. How can yes. they come find you? Come find us. We are, I mean, <laughs> and so Main Street is just right behind me. What hours so, are you open? So we're open from 7.30 to 4, Tuesday through Friday, and then Saturday morning from 9 to 12. So we have Facebook and we have the website. We have a website uh, that you can go there, Cakes by Becky. Becky, thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. It's thank been you. such a pleasure. And if you want to find out more about Cakes by Becky, just visit our website, WNZT.com. We'll have the full story over there for you. We'll be right back. Another sweet story to close out our show. Love knows no age. And one North Carolina couple is proving that statement to be true. Marine Worth spoke to a newly married couple who says despite their older age, their love feels young and new. Thank you, darling. There's a certain fanfare that comes with the big day. The champagne poured, the flowers perfect. But there are some things you can't control, like when love comes along. That's what we're here today, to celebrate the awe and wonder, creative possibilities that love brings out in all of us. Love's timing for Terry and Herb. I, Herb, take you, Terry, to be my wife. Has been a delightful surprise. We're not in our 20s, we're not in our 30s. So the important thing is that every single minute is so precious, and we only live minute by minute anyway. The two met in their retirement community in Charlotte. A lot of people, when they get into their late 80s or 90s, they feel that life is over, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> Terry wanted to get married before another big day, her birthday. But we won't say exactly how young she'll be turning. He is a year and a half younger. And she robbed night, the cradle. And last, and last night I told everybody that I this was my boy toy. So we're just going to leave it at that. And with that, just one more reminder. Love has perfect timing. With photojournalist Jenna Pinto, Maureen Wirtz, Queen City News. Congratulations to that happy couple. Thank you so much for joining us for nine on the positive side. A quick trip to Paris before we go. Let's take a look at this video to see the city of love. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next time.